97? Yeah. You were doing comedy in 97? Yes. When did you start? 95. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you stayed in San Diego. You no, no, no. Two years in. So I met you in 97 because of the fact that... When did you move to L.A.? 97. Yeah, that's when I, I met, met you. you. Right, I right met then. you in San Diego, I think. Well, then I met you even more longer. La Jolla? Yeah. No, 97. It was 97, but I think I met you in La Jolla. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, you yeah, were yeah. like one of the hot shots in La Jolla. Yeah, you came probably down with Rogan or maybe... No, 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 no. I came down there. And she used to have crazy shows then. And on Wednesdays, yeah. I used to always do Latino nights. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, Noe Gonzalez. Sure. Uh, the thicker Mexican guy. She only had <laughs> no. five regulars. No and way. Carlos. Yeah. And Freddie. Freddie Soto, yeah. So it was me, Marilyn Noe, Martinez. Freddie, Marilyn. Yeah, yeah. So it was nine out of ten times. It was me, Marilyn, and Noe. God. It's unbelievable. And then I... And then you. you, you I went to Latino Laugh Festival, probably in San Antonio. I probably right. met you there. But you were one of the big shots down there. No, like you man. Were I was the only guy in there. But you were one of the ones that people were talking about. So well, was, I don't know if they're saying that. But yeah, yeah, open yeah, mind, yeah. yeah, it doesn't oh, matter. Thanks, man. I love it. And you were tight with Shama, and you, know, you guys yeah, were really, yeah. making it happen. Mm -hmm. And then we met, and then you were regular at the comedy store. Uh, I got addicted, loved you. I got addicted to drugs. You, now, when did you get into drugs? Before When I got on Matt TV. No. Yeah. I was sober for 12 years, right? Then okay. I, okay so we then, had this talk. You had gone to a rehab for heroin when you were 16. 17, yeah. 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you stayed sober for, for a 12 long years, time. yeah. And then... Then I got on Matt TV, and the first day I was there, they just said... One of the producers said, I'm not going to name names because he, we're friends right, or whatever, right. but he said that I don't think that you're that funny and that we're not going to use you a lot. You know, that's what he said to me, dude. First day? Like maybe the first week or something. And so after he said that, I was just like, nah, I can't. I started doing drugs again. I couldn't handle it emotionally. When well, did you start doing heroin? Well, I was a 15 back then, but then I didn't relapse on heroin. I took Vicodin and stuff. Remember, I was a pill head, and I used to smuggle it. I used to smuggle it across state, and then I used to go down to Tijuana because they don't sell Vicodin in Mexico because they don't make it there. But I used to bring Somas and Valium and all that shit, and we used to just fucking, I used to have a pill box. I used to come to the comedy store and give it away like candy, remember? And I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know if you were a co I, I was the Coke guy. I know. You were I never. You never gave me you didn't like it. I know. You don't remember. But you offer, you know. <laughs> I like the offer. And if you offered, then I would be like, no, I don't thank you. It's uh, <clears throat> it's really weird that we're sitting across from each other. We both had the drug problems, mm. and now our lives are in focus. And you don't right? do no no more coke. No, I just smoke reefer. Seven years, no coke. Wow, that's great. No rehab, no mm -hmm. hugs, no nothing. Just yeah, I had day. to do a full turkey, man. I just nothing. Because if I smoke pot, then it's then it's like then it, it'll spiral down. I, I think if I don't smoke pot, that eventually my temper would flare or something, and I'd be down at the doctor's office getting Valium mm. or something for yeah. mood, something. Eventually, they have to give me something to balance me out. Uh, it's the people that are walking around that are crazy that don't know they're crazy. They're the fucked up ones. If you're crazy, but you keep it in check, and you yourself know you're crazy, and you avoid the things to make you crazy, yeah. you're okay. You're halfway there. You know, I realized at like 24 that something wasn't right. And then when I went to prison and I got out. Would well, you hit somebody over the head with a pipe or something? No, I kidnapped somebody. Oh, that's Big right. difference. In fact, he called me yesterday. <laughs> We've been playing phone tag. Uh I I uh, got I I gave him th uh, a hot UA when I was in the halfway house, mm -hmm. and they eat they they put you in jail for those in Boulder. I had a good attorney and he fought for me to go to a rehab, and I ended up going to an outpatient. Like everything was booked up, thank God, because they were like. So that six, means you don't. That means you live at home. Inpatients you live, where you live. I, there. I live in the halfway house, so basically I was going to my job, and then going to the. Uh, Going to the uh, halfway house from six to nine was the outpatient for six weeks, Monday through Friday. Six to nine, they'd piss you Monday, mm. and they'd piss you Friday or something. I forget what the fuck it was. Along with the piss test, I was taking at the other time, and that was the first time in my life at the age of twenty-seven that I had ever been sat down and done those things where you talk to people. Were you in comedy then? Not. Even the only comedy in my life was when I put a gun out and said, "Give me your money," and, then, and the gun went pow. That's the only comedy in my yeah. life in those days. It's my favorite kind of comedy. I was, uh, 
I was just a kid, you know, yeah, yeah. You're 20 fucking seven, bro. You know, these people in America today, these people who listen to the podcast, long you turn your life around. Listen, after a while, you got two choices. Either you turn it around or you die. Is it that tough to turn your life around? Yes and no, depending on how you look at it. It all starts with a job and going to bed and washing your pussy and getting up in the morning and drinking coffee. and It's a process, and some people can handle it, and some people can't fucking handle it, you know? I still can't fucking handle it, yeah. but I go through it every day. So that's the only reason why. That's the excuse I give myself for smoking weed. You do, do what do you do? It keeps me yeah, do what you do. going. I'm not shoplifting. I'm not hitting people in the head. Yeah, and I'm not breaking into the house. I haven't robbed the lighter. They've been putting them out for me lately. The <laughs> they've been trying to bait me. Uh -huh. The one on curson has been fucking with me. Every time I go to that one yeah. by the condo <laughs> store, they've been leaving them out. That's the one I killed. I broke my own <laughs> record in there like eight times. I would take people in there and show them. You took me. Did I take a light in front of you? You took me to? like, look, I'm going to put my hand in my pocket to they make them think I'm grabbing money, but I'm really grabbing a lighter and putting it in my pocket. <laughs> like, you had a whole system. Oh, my God, it's crazy. But that comedy true. saved me, though. Did it save you? Yes. Because remember, I was when I was 17, I'd been to three rehabs, right? I was the only Asian guy that got all Fs. Like, I was just retarded. My, my parents thought I had Down syndrome. They really did. They, they took me to, like, a doctor and everything. They go, like, he doesn't have Down syndrome. How come he could... Or if he's just stupid, you know. But it's like without comedy, I would be fucking. I don't know what I'd be doing. I have no skill set, you know. So sobriety and also comedy saved my life. If anyone out there is like well, thinking about doing it, just do it because it will literally, it'll turn your life around. It'll change if you're good. It'll change everything in your life. Well, how long ago was Mad TV? Because I remember you on TV. I know I don't have my hair, but I, I'm only 26. So, like, I, I remember you, I thought, like, middle school. Definitely high school you were on. How many TV. years were you on? All I was on it for eight years. Wow. Oh my God. I, I, so, I, I was around when you booked it. Yeah. And then you went off the deep end. Yeah. And they liked you so much. They told you. They had an intervention. They made you go back at 8 o'clock at night. I remember you telling me all these stories somewhere. Well, I, I mean, I... Ari Shafir has a Comedy Central. You did it too, right? The Comedy Central show, the right. one that's going to be on television, right. right? And I talked about how they gave me an intervention, and okay. then I was on Viking. I was taking thirty Vicodins a day, and then I sh I shit my pants on a Connie Chung sketch, live. How where many shit came out of my stockings? You know what I mean? And they said cut. I got fired, and then I got sober, and then I came back on the show for six years. Yeah. How, how many Vicodin? Like when you have an injury, are you supposed to take it in? Four? Two to four, yeah. Four, I was five, taking third. I was taking Brett Favre, like, yeah. 30 fucking Vicodins a day. And how many did you do that one weekend in Houston? You did a lot of I something. I did 30 Valiums. Oh, my God. In three days, Bobby Lee. Yeah, that will put down a T-Rex, man. That, that, that put <laughs> me down. I was talking sideways. We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.